Welcome back, Ram fans. This is Rams Up, your favorite L.A. Rams podcast. We are proud members of the Fans First Sports Network. That's fansfirstsports.com. You can also follow us on YouTube. Our channel is at L.A. Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. You'll hear from my co-host, Tom, on occasion as well. Hey, we're not Rams insiders. We're just longtime fans who love talking about our Los Angeles Rams. Let's get to it. Welcome to a spur of the moment edition of Rams Rams Roundtable, given today's epic news uh, dropping. And so we figured we'd get the crew together and get everybody's thoughts. Uh, So I'm Tom at Rams Beat on X, uh, your host, uh, joined by my co-host of the Rams Up podcast, Mark and regular contributor Ian, and Paul is going to be joining us soon. But guys, I mean, what a bombshell. We found out today this news that Jimmy G is joining the Rams. We had to get on and talk about it. No, just kidding. Of course, of course, just kidding. Of course, we're talking about the uh, Aaron Donald retirement. And uh, so, yeah, we had to get on and talk about it right away. Couldn't wait till next Tuesday. So I want to lead off with you, Mark. Um, what are your uh, initial thoughts upon hearing that Aaron Donald is, in fact, retiring? Well, you know, the selfish part of me was immediately thinking about what are we going to do along the defensive line? Where does this leave this franchise? But I'm trying to focus on just celebrating what a great player he was and how he, what an example he set uh, in that locker room, preparing I mean, nobody has done it like Aaron Donald has, uh, just getting himself ready for every season, for every game. And hey, you know, people are finally acknowledging perhaps the greatest defensive player ever, potentially the, one of the greatest players ever now that he's retiring. It seems like people are more more willing to, to uh, accept that, uh, all those Reggie White fans aside. But um, yeah, you know, it, it's a bummer, but I don't think it's the end of the world. And I, I just, you know, salute to Aaron Donald, um, what he did for this franchise and just just very proud that he was a Los Angeles Ram, really. Yeah, absolutely. And Ian, yeah. what, you, what were your initial thoughts? Gosh, dang it. That's exactly <laughs> what I when I got the messages from people. I was like, I can't believe it but i you know deep down am i am i super shocked not really i mean but the the initial burn that sucks man i mean look at guys this is the greatest ram arguably in the history of this franchise no matter where this team has been cleveland la st louis was going to maybe be in the me in Indianapolis once upon a time. <laughs> no matter where this this franchise has traveled, uh, you obviously, listeners, have your maybe favorite Rams. This is my favorite Ram. This is my number one Ram of all time. For performance, for leadership, for off the field, quality of human. It sucks to see that leave the building, man, and leave your franchise. And Look, we've been on this pod and we've discussed that, hey, I thought this would probably be the last year that it would be the trio of a cup, Donald Stafford. But damn it, I thought we had at least one more season. I thought we had at least one more year. And then I would have accepted the retirement. But to see him go, he seemed happy. I think his wife, Erica Donald, posted a, a video on her social media of Aaron opening up a special alcohol drink to celebrate and Aaron in that video said, I'm satisfied. I'm happy what I accomplished. And I can leave this game feeling good. Happy tears. And I think if you can, as any anyone retiring from anything they've done for a long time, can feel that way, then how can we not tip your hat and say, salute to you, sir. You did a good yeah, job. I, yeah, 100%. I mean, I, I feel like... I mean, he's, I, I don't even think it's close. The unquestionably the the greatest Ram of all time. He might be the yeah. best football player of all time. I mean, just it's, it's, <laughs> I know. You know, it's just it's so. Anyway, he has to be the greatest Ram of all time. But the I read that I was reading the uh, the posting on the uh, you know on, on X with all that with it when they posted his like retirement, 
um, announcement and all that. I was just think reading along and I want to gonna retire a Ram and you know one franchise the whole time. And I'm thinking, oh great, he's announcing his retirement for next year. Cause that had not even crossed my mind that he could potentially be retiring this year. I know. It never yeah. ever crossed my mind. I'd always discounted all of his previous retirement talk as you know a, 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 a little bit of leverage to get an extension. I thought there was a lot better I, I thought there was a chance that he might extend for another year because all these Rams contracts were shaping up over the next two years and, uh, you know, sort of yeah. concurrent with cup and Stafford and everybody else. So, and, and, uh, oh. and Tom, yeah. real quick, when you saw the restructuring news, maybe about 30 to an hour right. before I was right. like, remember we were hitting each other. Well, I was hitting you guys up. I was yeah. like, Oh, perfect. About nine, 10 million. I was like, well, that's good news. <laughs> and then, yeah, he's, and he's that's what made it worse later too. And they, like, did it. they did that on purpose to us. Yeah, well, they, they, I mean, the key was that, that the restructure did affect the, uh, the retirement. And, you know, I, yes. I, I went on and on about it. I tried to give everybody as much content as possible on that. And, Tom, please, please share that again with everybody listening, because I know not everybody <laughs> sometimes keeps up on the phone. Please share that. That's important. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I go, go through all of the, you know, the stages of it. But the net result of it is, is that uh, he would have had a, a cap hit to us this year and in, in, in the contract in its original form before today's restructure of 34 million. Yeah. And he, um, and after the restructure, after the retirement and assuming that they designate him a June one, um, uh, you know, as a June one uh, designation, that uh, means that, you know, his current is this year's cap number will, will remain in effect, but, um, but the future dead cap will, will accelerate to next year. That means that he'll drop from what would have been a $25 million dead cap next year to a $21 million dead cap next year. So 34 to 17 this year, savings of 17 million this year, 25 to 21 next year, saving of 4 million next year. That's the long and short of it. it, it the, the restructure was uh, was causing a lot of questions because why would they restructure a bunch of a salary that wasn't even guaranteed this year into signing bonus? And they basically... It's the reason is because there was a $20 million in option bonuses due today. If yes. he was on the, if he were on, if he were on the, uh, the roster today. Yeah. And so he agreed to retire after today. I mean, I mean, or before today or before, you know, if they, if they gave him something, it looks like that was the deal, the quid pro quo. And they gave him basically what amounted to eight and a half million dollars in guaranteed salary. Um, uh, as a signing bonus, uh, as a parting gift in order to, uh, not get into a fight over that option bonus and so forth. So yeah. amicable, but that, that's essentially the long and short of it. I've, I have more postings about it on X, but, um, Good so that was it. Yeah. And then that way that combined with no booms, uh, extension today saved us 8.25 million, pretty good savings, um, you know, today and, uh, and so forth. So, uh, anyway, that's the, uh, the financial part of it, but, um, yeah. of course, you know, we'd rather take, a lot, a huge cap hits and have Aaron Donald on the roster rather than, cool. you know, save cap money. We're never going to replace Aaron Donald with no. $17 million in additional cap space. So not no. going to happen. So anyway, um, you know, it is what it is. As Jordan Rodriguez says, two things can be true at once. That's so, right. Um, yeah. yeah. So where do we go from here? That's the question. Cool. Um, yeah. So, you know, that's a huge, they, they didn't sign anybody on that, on that front, you know, that defensive line. Right. I mean, noticeably nothing in the interior or on Oof. the edge and uh, yet. And so, uh, you know, obviously that becomes, <laughs> you know, a, oh, a, a, we had Kobe Turner in there, right. We thought it was the Kobe and Aaron show, yeah, but uh, you know now we we have a gaping hole to fill that we didn't think we'd have to fill. Yeah, maybe Mark. it ch maybe it changes their draft strategy a little bit. You know, I was yeah, thinking sure. they were they were going to load up and and draft you know uh, quality players, trade up in, at the top of the draft. Maybe maybe they still do that, but or maybe they try to accumulate extra picks and draft four defensive linemen. You know, take that that scatter shot approach they did last year and hope they hit on a couple of them. Yeah. I mean, guys, I mean, I, I, I think we all agreed that this was probably the case when we were talking about the draft not too long ago, that the Rams are not staying at 19. They're either going to trade up or trade down. That was something I feel very confident about. I think you guys agree with me to, to some form or another. So that's really the, probably the case this time around now that Donald is saying goodbye. There's no way they can just sit back at 19. 
trade up. Let's get a, get the player that you think will change the franchise, the best player they think is possible, or trade back and let's accumulate and let's try to hit more on the lottery tickets, right? Lottery tickets. Yeah, but so, the, the but they, the the problem is they still need another cornerback. I think they still need an edge rusher, yeah, and now yeah. they need at least one defensive lineman, right? We need and, everything. And th- there's some money there. There's some money, and there's some free agents left. So maybe there's some uh, some moves coming. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. Give a, a quick, uh, quick, a quick. Where does this all leave us on the salary cap? Um, very quickly, we're at about after the AD retirement and restructure, and then retirement. The no boom thing, we're at about twenty five million dollars, but that doesn't account for the uh, Cam Curl signing, which th- there's no details in on that. I'm assuming it's going to be about a five million cap hit. Um, this yeah. year, um, and Jimmy G, I think he's going to get somewhere in the four to five million dollar uh, range. Um, I, you know, I think it's going to be a Sam Darnold esque kind of a deal. Uh, so, um, anyway, he is suspended for a couple of games next year, but uh, yeah. but uh, anyway, so let's just assume we have 15 million dollars. Like, like, real quick, guys, what, what are we doing? Jimmy G, an hour later after Donald retired, like, come on, man. At least give us a day to just, <laughs> just mourn. Like, ah, yeah. oh, that's why I was like, today sucks. And look, yeah. this is no, like, this is no crap talk about Garoppolo. But it's like, can we just, can we just breathe for a night and just absorb the impact yeah. of the greatest I'm Ram one, ever? And it's I'm like, hey, former day. 49er player. Welcome. It's like one day of bad one, timing. Yeah, let's have a a, 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 a what's the word? Oh, Mark? Yeah, uh, you know, have uh, 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 you know, nobody. We we're not going to talk about anything else except for Aaron Donald for one day, and then we're going to, uh, and then tomorrow we can talk about no boom and Rose Boom and all of our booms, and we can talk about Cam Curl and Jimmy G uh-huh. and all the rhyming players that we're getting. And uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. It's just I, I know. anyway. I just wanted to share my thoughts. I was just like, what, yeah. like today. I think like, it was a, what do we do? So you don't necessarily have an, a, Go ahead, Mark. You don't necessarily have an issue with Jimmy G. Just the timing. Well, look, it, yeah. we can get into that, but, but it's just like, damn, dude, the man who ended Garoppolo's forty nine er career is like, hey, this is who <laughs> our backup quarterback is. It's just <laughs> ironic. I bet Garoppolo wouldn't yeah. be a Ram if if Donald was still a Ram. I think that's. Yeah. Uh, I think that's. <laughs> I think that's a conspiracy that's not too wild. I mean, let's just be honest. Uh, uh, there's been enough little mic'd up clips of Garoppolo and uh, Aaron Donald having some crap talk in the hut, you know, after yeah. game after plays. <laughs> so yeah, I'll tell you what about both of those guys though. They really do <laughs> seem to me. Um, um, uh, well, one of the things that we were thinking of, like, okay, what's your best memory of Donald? And it just kind of uh, my thought of it is, is it's he is you know, the mo- so mild mannered off the field, right? He's so calm and everything else, but on the field, you know, in practice, his work ethic and his, his leadership is, you know, uh, silent leadership really, he really wasn't vocal very much until his last year or two. And, um, and then, uh, but uh, when he gets on the field in, in the game situation, he's, you know, he goes maniac mode. And even in practices against in the in the uh, like against the uh, uh, the in in the the live practices, um, uh, you know, against like the the Bengals and stuff, he was, you know, ripping people's helmets off, and you know, he just goes King Kong, and, <laughs> and so uh, yeah, it's just it's just such a dichotomy. But um, but yeah, I, I don't feel like he would have had any issue with Jimmy Jam. Probably doesn't have any any real you know animus towards any individual probably you know i know he doesn't like the 49ers as a team but i'm gonna add hey uh we have uh paul joining us here very good what's up paul what's up boys we're just uh breaking down the uh the aaron donald uh situation and uh so uh we'll we'll bring you right into it what were your initial thoughts when you saw that he retired um, I thought, I thought it was a hoax. You're looking then, at your uh, calendar, uh, seeing if it's April 1st yet. Uh, you know, it was funny cause I was at work and my, my, one of my buddies at work, he was like, dude, did you hear the news? I was like, what news? He was like, uh, AD retired. I was like, what are you talking about? And I looked it up and I was like, oh my goodness. So, I mean, 
You know, Anthony and, Davis. Uh, gosh, oh wow, he. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like it was, he, it was hung over after a game. Yeah, after a bad game. <laughs> yeah, did he eat his there. joint again? Right. <laughs> yeah, so, he retired for the season again. Yeah, so, I mean, listen. The first thing that popped into my head was like I said. You know, I've said it every time, every year for the last couple. You can't pick and choose when you're going to make a Super Bowl run. These things happen. So you got to go in every year like you're going for the Super Bowl. But, um, yeah. you know, listen, you know, 99 problems was, you know, he's Mount Rushmore. He's on Mount Rushmore for for us, right? But, you know. Probably it's for the NFL, still, maybe I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still Super Bowl time. So we have to, you know, like they always say, uh, a certain amount of time to grieve and then, yeah, move forward. Um, I just don't know why they handled it this way. If this was, you know, the way that, if they knew that he was going to retire, why you, why they would handle it this way, as opposed to once again, just looks disorganized, just looks like not in tune with everything they're trying to do. Um, in what way we were, we were, we, Ian was mentioning earlier that he would have liked for the other news about, you know, Jimmy G and Cam Curl or, you know, Christian Rhodes boom, maybe Joe Note boom, maybe for that news not to be released on the same day that the greatest yeah. of all time so, is we, released. Give it a day. But, yeah. Like, but, but yeah, give it a day to breathe and let's celebrate this guy and we can get it back into business even tomorrow. But what are you referring to? Like if, if they knew they were going to go this route, right? I mean, maybe the timing of it was based on, on some salary cap implications, whatever. I would have done it earlier. You know, like honor him, you know, like let the team get into that mode of, you know, you know, really acknowledging what he's done, you know, his work ethic, what he, the sacrifice he brought to this team, things of that nature, and then allow the team to move forward as opposed to doing it smack dab in the middle of free agency when you're talking about building an SB winner. And now you're like, okay, the, you know, our, you know, number one player is now going to retire. It doesn't make it to me. Yeah, there yeah. was and, and today was today was the last day they could do it because today, yeah. you know, as I noted on X that that today he was due twenty million dollars in new guarantees and option bonuses that um, he agreed to forego in exchange for getting you know roughly eight eight and a half million something like that eight million dollars in sign in uh, in um, salary and roster bonus paid to him so. Uh, that was then amortized over the future, you know, signing bonuses. So he got eight million in exchange for not claiming twenty million. That was the quid pro quo. And so today was that, but that was due today. So you're right. I mean, to your to your point, Paul, um, in timing, they could have announced this theoretically way a long time ago. Ian, you were saying earlier that you thought that he knew as early as uh, as as what. Yeah, I'm well, sorry I mean, that that the Rams knew as early as what? Oh, were. I mean, it, it's based on all the reports the Rams have known for quite a while. What is that? Quite a while. My guess was at least at least the the soonest, probably the combine, based on yeah. Jordan Rodriguez's cryptic comments yeah. about the executives, about people not knowing Sean and Les's non-committal comments about Aaron Donald's future yeah. and how. You know, how not concrete that was about how others around the NFL were like, hey, something's going on there. Let's find out. Yeah. And, Mark, any thoughts on why yeah. you think the timing was today versus earlier? Or is there well, any, uh, I mean, I, well, obviously, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the, sorry, I'm the, I'm the, like the cap guy and the contracts guy. I can't think of any reason that, I mean, today was the last day they could do it. So they, they pushed it out as far as they could. I mean, and, you know, they, obviously some sometimes think of business in terms of in, in conjunction with the, you know, how to deal with the players and stuff like that. But any thoughts on why they pushed it out as far as they could? Well, I'm wondering if it's possible that do they, would they think that announcing it earlier would have deterred possible free agents from coming over to the Rams? I, I don't know if that's possible. I don't know if players think that way. Um, I, I do have another reason <laughs> This is actually, um, I'll share a little joke with you, a little uh, a humorous aside here. This podcast that this audio is going to be shared on is episode 399. And, you know, I've been oh. doing this. I've been doing this little bit where I talk about a player who's worn uh, a uniform number, number 99, would be this episode. And I already oh. recorded it. 
Whoa, and I wow. said, I can't use it. I said, you know what? Who am I going to talk about? Claude Roten? No, I'll, I'll, I'll have to... T- I'll have to talk about Aaron Donald, but it, it he's he's uh, it, it's almost uh, disrespectful for him to him. I got to dedicate an entire episode to Aaron Donald. I'm not going to talk about him for three minutes at the start of an episode, so uh, we won't do it this episode. This so this is three ninety nine episode three ninety nine. Oh my, there goodness. you go. So they were the waiting. In the football universe, I mean, we, man. We came up with that. I you and I talked about that right. idea. Um, was that uh, when was that? What episode was that about? It was like uh, I think it was actually three hundred one because the first yeah, one I, I did was was, yeah. was Byron Young, and I think um, it was right before it was the three hundred. So and, what they yeah. were probably doing was waiting until Rams Up Podcast got to three ninety nine. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I said, you know what? That makes more. And now it all makes sense. Now it all. <laughs> but but do you do you think free further. agents would? Do you think that would affect free agents' uh, willingness or desire to come over to the Rams if they, if Aaron Donald had retired? I, I don't know. Well, uh, look at that. Go ahead, Tom. I'm gonna share my thoughts after. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna say real quick. I, I I think that the only position I think it would affect would be the defensive line because those guys. When they play with Aaron Donald on the defensive line or edge, they get paid. And yeah. we didn't sign any of those guys. So the, the opposite could be true. There was whispers around the league that this was about to happen. Yep, and guys did, and happened. guys didn't come over. That yep. would be the bigger conspiracy theory. But anyway, uh, go ahead, Ian. I that what you just said is what I think is probably the case. I think because the NFL probably players knew it. That trickles down. I mean, well, executive front office coaches trickles down to agents. Agents get the whispers and then they tell their players. I think that's why we didn't sign anybody because I think everyone was like, eh, Aaron Donald's not going to be there. That sounds so, like. So they no tried fun. to keep it on the low down and it didn't work. And the edge rushers were like, uh, no, thanks. I mean, I mean, guys, we didn't sign anybody, anybody. Oh. I mean, damn, there had to have been something going on. So that's that's yeah. my darker sadder conspiracy of why but it makes sense <laughs> why haven't we signed anybody why did other guys that we could have afforded not come why paul, did josh I, Uche turn down you know it's just anyway making me more paul, what, paul any conspiracy theories on the uh lack of uh of interior defensive linemen and edges signing with us um conspiracy theories <laughs> well i mean any i mean any do you draw any conclusions with any no. linkage to between that that and the fact that Aaron Donald retired? No, not at all. I just I just think, I mean, you know, I was thinking about it like as I'm dri- you know driving home today, right? I know he's retired. I'm like, okay, I'm in my head. I'm changing my mock drafts. I'm changing all these different things. Um, you know, listen, look, you know, it's great. Listen, he's he was a great player, one of the all time great Rams, no question about it. But, you know, I've been saying it for, what, three years now? I was like, look, enough's enough. Dude, you want to retire, retire. Same thing with, for McVay. Same thing for everybody else. Listen, look, thanks a lot. I, we appreciate it. But, you know, keeping people in limbo for three years, you know, look how – and this is this is the other thing. I mean, look, I, I hate to be like the harsh, you know, voice of, you know, reality, but they threw away two seasons. That's the reality of it. The Rams threw away two seasons. And it's really, really hard. I said it how many, not even two episodes ago on the round table. I said it's very, very hard to go from two seasons of, you know, we don't need to win to now, like, let's go chase a ring. Listen, it, too, it that was an embarrassing loss in Detroit. I don't think enough people are talking about that. That was an embarrassing loss in Detroit. Watch that game. It wasn't good, yeah. That was an embarrassing loss. People downplayed it. Oh, we weren't expected to win. What kind of talk is that? That was an embarrassing loss. They broke Iron Kyron's hand. They they almost knocked out Stafford again. I mean, that was an embarrassing loss. And in my opinion, when we walked away from that, not we, but I'm just saying, when the Rams walked away from that Detroit game, that reaction told me that we were not in a good place. <laughs> you know, the way they walked away from that Detroit loss. They weren't angry. They weren't upset. You know, it was almost too casual. So it's hard to go from two years of the mindset of like, it's okay to lose. So now it's like, oh, let's go chase a ring. Now you add this on to it. I'm telling you, they, it's it's going to take a lot. Um, one thing I will say that's sort of interesting is that where what direction are the Rams going to go on defense? Um, for now that, 
you know, Chris Shula uh, is there. Are, are they going to go uber athletic at linebacker? Are they going to stay with that same type of tight front format? You can do a lot, you know, they have to get sort of like commit themselves to a defensive philosophy now because they got to start retooling, right? Because you don't have 99 there. 99, think about it. He solved 99 problems, saved a lot of problems for the for the Rams on me. Well, he changed. He certainly changed the uh, dynamics of the of the secondary. I mean, when you can get pressure and yeah. and so forth, you know, they they were they had the luxury of never having to sign a or you know for the last five years having to sign a uh, any kind of a contract for any safety, you know. And so we we looked at all these safety contracts that were constantly being signed and traded for by the you know, these big trades by the guys, you know, the, the Seahawks, and he's going all in on these safeties. And we're like, ah, you know, we just, we just draft them and let them go. You know, we just pay them a million dollars. And, um, well, let and, me ask you uh, this question. And, but Everybody now they signed Cam Curl today. I mean, just to yeah. make my point, my point great is signing. they signed, yeah, they signed Cam Curl, which is a great signing, but that was an unexpected signing from the standpoint that Rams don't sign safeties. So, um, uh, so it could be that could be the beginning of a shift in philosophy, right? And a shift of, of yeah. team building philosophy. Go ahead. Well, let me ask you this question. Oh yeah, yeah. To show you to show you how much of a luxury they had with ninety nine problems. When they signed Ashawn Robinson to what what was it like five six million a year? Yeah, we were like that was like a huge defensive line signing. I want you to name one D lineman that they signed in the last five years. Apart yeah, interior, from interior, interior, interior Ro- guy, rockers, yeah. but you know, we traded them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Brock is done. Was gone. Right. One, yeah. one D lineman other than Ashawn Robinson. That was such a big, we reacted to Ashawn Robinson signing like, Oh my gosh. Where, you know, he was like, uh, you know, really like, not a good too, big signing in terms oh, of contract. I want to throw they one thing out there. That's been on my mind here. Yeah. Is there any, and it, it's been, you know, was, floating around X and so forth. But Mark, if the Rams make the playoffs or are making a playoff run, is there any chance he comes back? Because you know he's going to be in shape. Yeah, that I mean, crossed if, my if, mind. You know, if Weddle can be on shape on the beach, right. Aaron Donald, you know, is going to be in shape. Yeah, that crossed my mind. It did. And I, I suppose it's possible if you get into a, a playoff situation and, and maybe you're a little banged up. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be great. And do you think he comes back? I, yeah. if we... It's it's possible. If Eric Weddle well can do it. Full Brady and yeah. do it every yeah. year for like three years. Two years it's later, Eric back. Weddle was older and not as a freakazoid like Aaron Donald. It's possible, but I mean, look it. We just got to let that thought go. We just got to do it as a fan base. Well, everybody, just let it go. We just got to yeah. accept it. If it happens, hell yeah. But Definitely. I just gotta let it go because let's just we just gotta absorb the situation as is, right, gentlemen? We just gotta absorb it and just say, damn it, life without Aaron Donald. Because guys, let's be honest. I'm worried. I'm worried about the football side of it. I am. Because as of today, this is obviously before the rest of this free agency time. This is obviously before the draft and before any practices, and there's a lot goes down before any game action in September. I get all that. But as of today. This team's not a Super Bowl contender, not at all. You know, we gotta be, we gotta be, we gotta be fair. I don't think so. There's not enough consistent defensive playmakers for us to be in a championship opportunity right now. As of today, as of today, right now with Aaron Donald retiring, I love Ernest Jones. Kobe Turner had good good moments. Byron Young had some good moments. Quinn Lake had some good moments. Those are young players. We got to see it to believe it. I got to see it to believe it. But we look at every team that wins the Super Bowl has multiple defensive game changers, difference makers that are consistent. We, we don't got that right now other than Ernest Jones. We don't. That's not enough. And if everyone thought our defense was going to be bad going into last year, I don't know well, what I don't know how much better it's going to be this year as of today, as of today. Yeah, that that Super Bowl contender argument it's you got to be careful how you quantify that um i think i think they definitely i'm not counting them out for a playoff push absolutely not with this offense no, they, me, the way they've geared up yeah. and if they can make a playoff push and at the same time 
add a few bodies on defense. You never know what's going to happen. I just want to be entertained. I want to be, I want my team to be relevant and have a shot. And, and I think they still do with what they've done on offense with or without Aaron Donald. But yeah, it sucks. And the defense, the defense worries me, but at the same time, man, we can just run it down people's throats. We got a great quarterback, good receivers, and, and that side of it, I'm still excited. But yeah, it's uh, yeah. certainly certainly changes things. McVay needs to have his best offensive game uh, game uh, calls. He has to. We can't have those games where we lose on some BS, not running the ball, not whatever red zone. It has to be good. I yeah, I think that. I think Paul and I need to run a mock draft where we we trade Very around and, and pick up fourteen picks and draft all defense. I have <laughs> I had Byron Murphy in two back to back mocks. I was so excited, and oh, yeah. uh, uh, two uh, t- uh, two other mocks where I had Chris Jenkins in the second round and Ruka Roro in the second round. Yeah, so, yeah. Move on from Roma Dunze and uh, and Keon yeah. Coleman and you. If, if if one thing I think is exciting, if Shula decides to go, obviously McVay, right? If they decide to go uber athletic at linebacker, Edge Cooper, man, from Texas A and M, next to uh, Ernest Jones, you know, throw out four super athletic linebackers, sign Clowney. I'll rock with that. Yeah, I think we could get by. I don't know if we need to draft any offensive lineman with Noteboom coming back. We probably will, but um, you know, we can spend our draft capital. Uh, yeah, 80, 90 percent on defense. I think might have. I, I honestly think that I am telling you that if they if they make a run, Donald's coming back to play in the playoffs. I don't think this is cool. I I so. we, got four, we got four for four that we we were thinking that. I'm, I'm telling gonna, you, that was the first I'm gonna, little, I'm gonna put a little bit of a wet blanket on that because <laughs> the cap implications would be devastating, and I'm not even sure that they could happen if you designate somebody a June one. Um, I don't know if you can bring them back. So anyway, uh, it, it would be it would go from 17 million to 38 million in cap hit this year, which would be I'm not sure that's even possible. So I mean, I have to look into that a little bit more. But and you know, to be continued. But well, forget the cap implications. He's coming back if we go to the playoffs. Screw yeah, it. Though. Hey, awesome. one other thing I thought was interesting, and this is this is I was shocked about this, quite frankly. Maybe just just because I'm follow this kind of stuff, but. The, uh, the the NFC championship odds and the Super Bowl odds um, did not change in uh, um, today after, you know, from before the retirement announcement till after the retirement announcement. Um, and even I just checked just to verify as we're recording here at about, you know, 530 on Pacific time um, on Friday. They still haven't changed. And so, you know, assuming we were talking earlier, maybe they'll change throughout the day now. There's a chance there was some assumption this was going to happen. These odds makers tend to get good information, um, but the, neither of those, you know, those haven't changed. So either it's uh, they had they would either was baked in, or they feel like Aaron Donald's uh, uh, presence isn't going to move the needle. Yeah, and I thought the I thought the odds were a little bit longer than they should have been. So maybe that's the case. Yeah, they were a little bit longer than they should have been. They're sort of like, uh, you know. Uh, 14 to one for the NFC championship and 32 to one for the Super Bowl. So pretty, pretty long odds for the Rams. Anyway, yeah. um, well, uh, Mark has to leave in about five minutes. So I want to go rapid fire with Mark before we. Uh, I feel like I'm on before, a game show. Yeah, I know you are. We're going to go rapid fire. Here. We're gonna, <laughs> this is the new, uh, the new, uh, yeah, this is going to be part of our, one of our new segments. Um, so rapid fire on other news of the day, Mark. Okay. And then uh, we can break it down after you go. Um, so first thing is Joe Noteboom extension saves eight, takes eight, $8.25 million pay cut. Net net effectively agrees to make $6 million this year. Right. So if he would have left, um, none, uh, virtually none of his money this year was guaranteed. So if he would have uh, been cut, Right then, the Rams would have had a little bit bigger, uh, 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 uh bigger um, dead cap hit. But um, no, from No Boom's perspective, right? They he he gets six million dollars roughly, and so um, is that a 
do you feel like he could have, if he would have been released by the Rams, cut by the Rams, he, he could have, he would have been an unrestricted free agent. Do you think Joe Noteboom could have gotten six more than six million dollars from another team, or do you think Joe Mo, Noteboom made the right move and in coming back to the Rams and taking six million dollars? Well, I haven't been tracking uh, what kind of contracts offensive linemen of his uh, level have been getting. Um, He's a starting but, left tackle, Mark. He right, was, hey. yeah. <laughs> well, he was. I'm, and, I'm kidding. I'm but, kidding. <laughs> but I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. But, you know, you don't know what's going on in a player's head. He he likes, he. you know, you don't, It sometimes it's more than that. Maybe he loves living in Ventura County and he loves the culture there and uh, all I'm going to say is I'm glad he's back. I've been saying this for months. I know there's a lot of note boom haters, but you can do a lot worse as a sixth offensive lineman when you're, well, we thought they were making a Super Bowl push, a playoff push. You need guys like that, and we're probably going to end up needing them. So yeah. as far yeah. as the, what he could have gotten, I really don't know. I, yeah, I, fair enough. You, fair enough. You think he, you think he would have been able to get more, though? I think he's. I think, I think he could have been right around that number. Um, but uh, they gave him another point, you know, three quarters of a million in, you know, the roster bonuses or, you know, game bonuses or something. Anyway, next topic, um, Cam Curl. You know anything about Cam Curl? Are you glad he signed? It's about two uh, years. The, the only thing dollars. I, what I do know about Cam Curl is that he was a seventh round draft pick and the commander's fan base loves him. Uh, I did a little wow. bit of reading about him. I think he had a his, um, it was, I think it was his second year, uh, he had a little bit of a downswing, uh, but overall the commander fan base loves him. I think he's really versatile and, um, Hey, seems like a good ad to me from what I know. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people are saying it was a steal and the, and then you, know, you can always tell when the, uh, the team that he didn't resign with, like in this case, the commanders, the fan base is furious that the, Commanders yeah. didn't resign him. For yeah, and a little a little note on that 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 same draft, the Rams drafted two safeties, Terrell Burgess and Jordan Fuller, uh, well ahead of him. But I mean, a big plus for Jordan for uh, Cam Curl is that he's a seventh round draft pick, and the Rams refuse to play anybody at safety that's you know anything yeah. lower anything lower than a fifth round. So so yeah, he fit the bill. Um, okay, next question. Um, Christian Roseboom is coming back. He's a starting. He was a starting. A, a starting inside linebacker for the Rams last year. He was an, uh, a, a restricted free agent. They did not tender him. He did not take uh, any other offers. And at this point in time, he's coming back to the Rams. What are your thoughts? Well, I think he's a solid, reliable player. And, you know, I had my shopping list that I developed, and one of them was an inside linebacker. And, you know, I'm trying to remember – did I, 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 I knew Roseboom was leaving, but I didn't know if I would check that box by bringing Roseboom back. And I, I'm kind of, you know, kind of on the fence about that. I, I welcome him back. Uh, we need, it, it's a thin group after what we got the uh, Fatikasi, whatever his name is from Rutgers and Jake Hummel and Ernest Jones and that's it. So yeah, welcome him back at a reasonable contract. Ideally, we would still add a, um, I'd love just to have a pair of really top-notch linebackers back there. I don't know what's going to happen this year, though. But yeah, bringing Roseman back makes sense. Gotcha. And the last question before you have to go is your reaction to our new backup quarterback. Mr. Jimmy Garoppolo. Well, you know, I, I'm a, I hesitate to say because I was watching Ian's eye rolls every time we mentioned Jimmy G. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think, you know, in this offense, you know, he's a proven NFL starting caliber quarterback. I, I think he played pretty poorly last year and he has limitations. But I think he's he kind of fits the system good as a backup quarterback. If you need him to come in for a couple games, now, he doesn't have the, the legs and the wheels, guys like Carson Wentz and Tyrod Taylor, uh, Brissett, some of these other guys, but I'm okay with it. it it's uh, uh, I think it'd be really interesting if uh, Stafford missed a game against the 49ers and uh, we had to go to Jimmy G. That would be fun. But Yeah, so uh, so just as a follow-up, um, then we'll let you go, is uh, what do you think 
his um, his salary hasn't been. It's a one year deal. We know that. We don't know what his compensation is. What do you think his comp? What do you think his uh, his comp is going to be? And let's see. Wentz was uh, we gave Wentz a million. I think it was. Um, I would suspect it'd be maybe in the two two and a half million per year. Just guessing. I'm okay. not a contracts guy though. I, I really have no idea. Yeah, I'm guessing it's going to be more in the Darnold range in that three to uh, four to five million dollar range. Yeah. But we'll see. Um, okay, good. Well, hey, we let you go. Enjoy your uh, evening out. Thanks for pushing the. Um, I'm gonna let. I'm gonna just hopefully. Hopefully, you're okay with this. If not, just edit it out of the audio because you're in charge because you're the producer. Um, but I wanted to give you the chance to to give the audience what I thought was hilarious when you have a, a standing date with your, your wife on Friday night and you had to push it back to have this emergency podcast and she didn't necessarily understand when you told her what happened and I wanted you to give, share everybody what the analogy you gave her to try and help her understand. Yeah, I, I told her if it was it would be like if she found out um, on the way on the drive home that General Hospital was being canceled forever immediately. <laughs> No, no more general hospital. She'd be on the phone with her friends. Uh, good thing she doesn't watch these. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Well, hey, thanks a lot, Mark. And uh, have a great night. Well, we'll be back with you soon. Back to uh, back to uh, Ian and Paul. Here. Yeah, and don't give up faith, guys. It's, Rams could still have a very good season. I'll leave That's it at that. Good. The elder okay. statement has spoken. Yeah. Okay, That's guys, right. out here. Okay, take care, Mark. Have a great one. So, um, so let's get into some of these other topics, guys, uh, uh, with you. So, um, you know, Note Boom, Ian. Do you feel like uh, uh, do you feel like Note Boom could have gotten more than six million dollars elsewhere, or do you feel like that was about the right number? No, I, I feel like that was probably the right number for a backup. And, and apologies if I'm lagging here. I hear thunder and lightning outside my room, so that's that shows you the weather that's going on out here in LA right now. Um, but back to no boom. Sorry about that. I just want to share that in case audio or video gets a little, little weird here on my end. But I mean, look at guys, he was going to get cut. And if he did not take this pay cut, he was, he was going to get probably lower level backup money somewhere else. Let's just be honest and not be a Ram, not be in Los Angeles, not be in a system where he's, you know, not valued be somewhere else where he's going to have to earn the respect of players and coaches. He already has the respect of, of our coaches and the rest of the players. We know he can fill in in a pinch and play good football. So I think for him to accept this, I mean, what a team guy. It's not easy having to accept millions being taken out of your paycheck, right? That's a, that's a tough spot, man. But it's the yin and yang of it. Do I leave and I'm not guaranteed anything or do I stay here and I'm guaranteed something? And that comes with money, respect, possible playing time. And I think those were options that he weighed. And I think he made the right choice. And it benefits us, obviously. But I don't know if he would have gotten serious money anywhere else anyway. Paul, what do you think? I mean, it's good. Like I said, um, I think Nopum, in terms of the depth aspect of it, you know, he's a proven player. Um, a lot of people feel he has starter capability. It's a luxury that the Rams have. Um Contract wise, I mean, they made it work. I mean, they made the offensive line deeper and stronger, regardless of uh, what anyone says about his uh, capability. Right? You have to look at it like you know, like Ian said, you have to be functional when you look at it. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sort of like neutral on him, but from the standpoint of, you know, when you think back to that Super Bowl run. You know, he did play a pivotal pivotal role when Whit uh went out. So, uh, yeah, I think it's underrated. I think if we would have lost Note Boom, there would have been a lot of talk. You know, I mean, aside from the Aaron Donald being the same day as Aaron Donald, I think we would have. Uh, uh, there would have been a lot of talk that wow, we don't have any depth on our off- on our offensive line. And from his, but I view it from his perspective because the Rams were going to cut him, and they're trying to figure out what his market value is, and that's where they would give him right. Oh, he, you know what, you guys go figure out what your market value is and we'll match it and you can stay here or leave. And so from his perspective, he's like, okay, let's say I was worth $6 million. Um, I can go somewhere else. Maybe I can get a starting gig as a guard or, or something like that or a right tackle or 
who knows? I mean, the guy's so versatile. He could probably start almost any position except center. And so he's thinking about that. And, and if you're, he's a perfect candidate. If you think about it for like one of these uh, salvage years where he goes and, and, yeah. and, and, and you know, tries to, tries to get a, a reclamation year where he starts and proves himself, you know, kind of a, a Kevin Dotson kind of a guy or something like that, you know? And, um, and so, uh, and then gets a big bag at, you know, when he just kills it. And so, you know, he, he's not, he's not going to get that with the Rams because he's not going to start. Right. He knows that he knows he's not a starting offensive lineman for the Rams. And so I, if I'm, I'm putting myself in his head and I'm thinking, you know what? I can stay with the Rams. I know I'm number, I know I'm the first guy in and I know I have a really solid offensive line around me. So he's probably betting on the statistics. He's not hoping for, and nobody hopes for injuries, but statistics show that it's extremely rare that your entire offensive line stays healthy for the entire year. Somebody's going to go down statistically speaking, right? It's very rare. Like our Super Bowl year, we were very lucky um, that nobody was permanently out, you know, out for the entire year. So he thinks he's going to probably statistically going to get a shot. Even if our, even if a Villa goes down as a center, he's going to move to guard and, and, and we're going to, you know, put somebody else in there. So, um, and, and no boom will, uh, you know, no boom's going to get a shot no matter what um, if somebody goes down. So, I think that's what he's thinking. And then he'll play, you know, kill it uh, aside from all, uh, you know, in, around all these other great players and, and get a bag next year. So um, he's probably betting on himself. I, I I just put myself in these guys' shoes and I think they always bet on themselves. Anyway, that's that, that was my take. Think about Roger Saffold. Didn't he go through this whole same scenario? Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Very similar. Yeah. For three, for three seasons before finally he got that huge deal. Yeah, so, he, gets, he gets a chance and a deal. So let's talk about Cam Curl. So Cam Curl. So the first, as we mentioned earlier, this the first safety to get any kind of a contract from the Rams. You know, be over, you know, three, four, five million dollars um, a year. And so, uh, uh, Ian, what are your thoughts on Cam Curl? Paul, go to you. Ian's a little. Uh, Ian's uh, so frozen a little bit. I mean, I love the signing. I love Cam Curl. I think uh, it was, you know, it was interesting uh, when we were playing around with free agents. We automatically, I think, all of us said, "All right, you know, the safety market is just not for us because that's not what they do." We thought, right? For sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Scott's coming back. Nick Scott's going to be the signing. Right. Uh, Cam Curl, SEC kid, Razorbacks. Uh, t- so many people feel he is probably one of the most physical safeties in the league. So right off the bat, uh, puts him in my, uh, you know, positive house. I lo- you know, I love that. <laughs> you know, can definitely play deep center if he has to. But, you know, Mark and I were talking about this at the last mock draft is that, you know, it's interesting is that I said, if they got more athletic at safety, the type of things that they could do now that with Lake being there and having almost that double star scenario, they can run that uh, split half field coverage that they like so much that cover six. Think about it. Now you can do that with this kid. This kid plays the run. He can play in the box. He can do all sorts of different things. He's athletic. He can make plays um, deep middle. So he gives them a lot of versatility. I think that combination of curl and Lake, I mean, think about it. I, I know that the Rams were talking about that three safety look because they did it last year and it worked out really well. Remember when they lost confidence in Kendrick and they were forced to go? Yeah, yeah. No, they, really, really. It was out of necessity, on lack yeah. of confidence in the in the yeah in the cornerback room. But and yeah, they stumbled into this like oh holy cow! Look at the way Lake is playing the star, right? So mm-hmm. I think that might be I I you know bringing back maybe Nick Scott on a really really cheap deal might might even make sense as well, but. um I think that's, you know, this is just part of it. I mean, look, it's, he's a young guy. Uh, I was thinking about Xavier McKinney before he got that huge deal because, he you know, that was one of my favorites in terms of free agents was McKinney. So, but this is a great sign. I, I don't understand what Washington was thinking about letting this kid go uh, unless there's something I'm missing. Um, I You know, I remember his draft uh, uh, 
combine workouts. I remember his scouting report. So I think he's a great fit. He's going to be the ringleader for the Rams secondary. Um, and, you know, just love it. Just love it. I think it's a great signing. Ian, Cam Curl. Yes, and um, shout out to Thunder and Lightning, you know, kind of calming down over here in the east side of Los Angeles. Man, it is pouring out here crazy. Sorry for wow. the technical issues. But, um, yeah, I mean, shoot, guys. We paid a safety. Who would have thought, <laughs> right? I mean, the last time we paid a safety any good money was LaMarcus Joyner back in yeah. uh, 2018. And that was probably the last time we've ever put serious money into that position. So Weddle, a little, we gave a little bit. Oh, more. yeah, we gave a little bit of cash to Weddle, too, but. Uh, to, for Cameron Curl here, I mean, guys, I think we kind of have to take a step back and realize the big picture of the of just how crappy Washington was ran this last season. Let's just be real. Everyone didn't play up to par. Nobody did. Sweat, Young, Allen, Payne, Curl, Fuller, they all have played way better football for Washington other than this last season. It was just a mess. Okay. So we take that into perspective that all their best players did not play as well because of the dysfunction. We rewind to two seasons ago. Cameron Curl was a top five safety. I don't even think that's a question. His film was excellent. His PFF grades, if you pay attention to those things outside of film, which film is number one, don't forget. He was the second highest graded safety. I mean, th this dude is good. Even this last season, his stuff was good. But again, dysfunction, things were not perfect. I thought the schemes were meh. But I mean, guys, to get him for two years, only $13 million for one of the top, let's say a top 10 safety the last couple of years, depending on who you ask. Objectively, don't just listen to names, watch the film. I mean, damn, I'm shocked he wasn't getting, you know, 10, 12, 13 million dollars a year, which I know the safety market is you know, is depreciating right now for whatever reason, which is crazy. We're lucky. We're very lucky to get somebody young, talented, and can tackle. Think about that last playoff game, how much that was pissing off our fan base and making me mad, seeing how many <laughs> missed tackles there were. This guy ain't yeah. going to miss on his tackles, and that's a big part of the future, which I'm sure Shula, who is a safety guy, he's the one who identified Fuller, identified John Johnson to draft the Rams. He pushed for the Rams to draft those guys. There's no doubt that he pushed – our front office and Coach McVay to sign this guy, and we got him at a good deal. Yeah, interesting. And real Fuller, Fuller might make be making the same amount at, at you know just over five million dollars as uh, as uh, who do you go to Panthers? I think. Um, yeah, uh, Carolina. Re, yeah, re, reunited is, is, with uh, real quick, is this, and, I just want to show something on my screen to present. Am I able to do that real quick? It's like yeah, 10 I'm not sure that we're gonna have this on uh, on video, but it sounds good. Well, just 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 for our fun. What is this? this yeah. Is, oh, okay. He uh, says you do that. So Fuller makes uh, 5.25, I think, for a year. And uh, Cam Curl will probably make about $5 million this year and probably uh, another five next year with a, like a $3 million roster bonus or something like that. So it's not guaranteed. But um, look, at, yeah, look, at, look at that. Can you see? Let's see here. Oh, so I don't know if it's showing up. Look at this man in a Rams uniform. <laughs> That's very nice. Shout out, how, shout out to how do these things? I want to. I want to ask this question. I might be. Um, maybe I sound uh, old and stupid, but how do these players from other teams get put? Get have pictures, or you know, how does it get? How do they get put into their new team's uniforms when they clearly? Have well, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of Photoshop, and this is uh this is uh, from our friend on Rams, the Rams universe, Moss to Branch. So he does some edits, a lot of Ram stuff. And I touched it up in some areas. Obviously, I took away the name tag that bothers me on our jersey, added the blue collar just for fun. And <laughs> some, other, some other stuff I think that we should do with our uniforms in 2025. But hey, man, with the, with, it's a lot of just really good editing with, with uh, Photoshop, really. It's finding pictures of Rams players that are in a similar position. And then obviously, you morph it to fit on a, on a player like this. So hey, everybody, that's pretty good. It happens I mean, all the time on it. Maybe Darius Williams is going to have to fight for the number, but maybe he goes back to 11, Darius, but hey. Happens all the time on X. You see these these players in, in other uniforms when they get traded and stuff, or somebody saying, I want my player in, in, in this uniform. And yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, I love I love that stuff. Anyway, he looks, yeah, hey, he looks hey, not bad in blue and white. 
and gold looks, looks really good. good. So anyway, I just want to show that. Good. <laughs> Let's move on to uh, the next topic, which is Mr. Jimmy Garoppolo. So I'm going to let, before Ian shares his feelings, I'm going to let uh, Paul share your feelings. So you will have to bleep out a lot of my feelings. So I'm going to try to keep it. <laughs> I, I don't even know why they signed him. Just so you're not, a, you're, not a, you're not a fan. Not at all. Especially, you know, just think about that. Nine nine retires and he comes on the team. Oh my god! Well, aside man. from that, let's not let's not let's not juxtapose those. Let's move on from that. As a backup quarterback, yeah, even as a backup quarterback, why? What 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 does he bring to the team? We're signing him as a backup. So what does he bring to the team? Tell me, apart above and beyond any other backup quarterback. I mean, I feel like I think I mean I think the, the devil's advocate or the of, of why they signed him was. Um, scheme fit, you know, he's been a starting, a, a productive, very, uh, you know, winning quarterback, you know, with a good, you know, on a good team when he was with San Francisco, he's one of the winning insights, sort of, maybe insights about the 49ers, right? He was, oh, I mean, that, yeah, that I mentioned that to you guys earlier today. He brings a lot of insights. The Rams and 49ers love signing each other's players for for those reasons, right? I mean, you Sebastian Joseph Day, it was. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of guys, right, that, that have gone back and forth on these teams. But I don't think they would have done it for the just for that reason. But you know, when he's in a good system and he and he and he's uh, has a good play caller, like he did with Shanahan, you know, he was one of the most winning. He was one of the winningest quarterbacks, starting quarterbacks in the NFL. And um, he had his deficiencies, but you know, he goes to the Raiders and he sucks, and it's because they sucked. You know, and they had a shitty offensive system, and he's a system quarterback. I mean, let's just face it. And so, McVay can set him up to succeed in a system in a system, and he's highly accurate. He can process things quickly. He's terrible out of once once he gets out of the the system. He's one of the worst, as a matter of fact, when you get out of the system. Um, but you so know, you that, haven't convinced me yet, Tom. Okay. So, well, no, he's no, but you know, so he's yeah, he's not a freewheeling guy. You know, he's not you know, he's not Baker or whatever when he gets out of this. But and he doesn't have that arm strength for especially you know throws. But he he could execute a McVay could create a uh, condense the playbook for him to and he could he could he could operate it very efficiently, um, and uh, that's why. And, and 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 what was the contract you were anticipating for him? Five mil? I think uh I think he's gonna get probably I'm I'm thinking more in the four mil range, but uh yeah. I mean just to just a little bit of a side note for and that's what's wrong with the, and that's what's wrong with the NFL today. Folks. Just a little bit of a side note out there for everybody that he you know when he got he got uh um uh, caught using something that was a banned substance or something as a two game sure. suspension suspension in 2024 and that voided the because he because of that that automatically voids any guarantees on your 2024 contract so he lost 12 million guaranteed or, or thereabouts from the raiders um that probably would have been a, he probably would have had an offset contract like russell wilson where he could have you know, where he could have signed anywhere for $1.2 million and at the minimum and still made his $12 million. Um, and so, but that, because that's avoided now he's trying to, he has to make as much as he can. So, and, and it goes into his pocket. So that's why I think it'll be probably in the $4 million range, but anyway, regardless, um, yeah. Ian, what are your thoughts on Jimmy G? <sighs> like I, I don't, you weren't here yet, Paul. But I said, what are we doing announcing this on the same day, <laughs> an hour later, less than an hour later than Aaron Donald calling it quits and we all are in our fields? Like, damn it, Rams. Let's just cool it on that. So I shared my thoughts earlier on that or I, what I just told you. But, okay, objective. Let's just take my, my irritated feelings out of it. Okay, look it. What are the positive? I'll start with that. He's familiar with this West Coast modern – Shanahan, Mike Shanahan style offense that McVay runs. Now is he familiar with that route? 
He's also familiar with the Kyle Shanahan route, which we are starting to implement heavily, and we have with LaFleur being our OC. So he's familiar with this scheme in all its different levels of classic to modern to power. He knows all of it and has played in all of those styles. That's a plus. Can he? Does he have to learn it from scratch? No, that's a plus. Will he be able to play tomorrow if he really had to? He probably could, and it wouldn't be terrible. It wouldn't be bad. Now, what are the minuses? <laughs> the money better be significantly cheap. I'm sorry. The only way this signing is okay to me is if Carson Wentz was demanding a lot of money. It's the only way. The only way I'll be okay with it. Because obviously we had our quarterback backup list earlier this last month or so, right? We talked about Tyrod. We talked about Minshew. We talked about Brissett. We talked about others and others that are all signed to teams pretty much at this point. So it's, you know, the list isn't too large. Wentz was my number one. And look at Garoppolo is not athletic like Wentz. He is very much injury prone, as we have seen the last gazillion seasons since he's been a pro. That's not a good formula to have a backup who is backing up somebody who also gets injured. And Matthew Stafford's a tough son of a gun, and he plays through a lot. Let's not get it twisted here. But that's not a great formula, right, to have two guys in your depth chart at quarterback have health issues consistently in some form or another. Not great. His arm's okay, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's pretty much it. He has start, plenty of starting experience. We've seen good Garoppolo. We've seen really bad Garoppolo. I'll give him a slight pass for the McDaniels experience because McDaniels has never had a good offense when he hasn't been coaching with Tom Brady, the greatest ever <laughs> at quarterback. Okay, let's just get it straight. Everyone, And then real quick for all my Raider friends that are out there, I told you that move was going to be <laughs> terrible, and look what happened. Anyway, I just wanted to shove it in their faces one more time about that. But I'll give him a pass because of that a little bit. McDaniels, not a good play caller, not a good coach when it's not with Tom Brady. Sorry. So we'll see. But that contract is going to dictate really how I feel about all of it. Is it a lot of money, which is, you know, $4 million and above? I'll be pissed. And if Carson Wentz was demanding more than that, then I'll have to bite that bullet a little bit more than I would like to. But if those numbers end up being the same down the line, I'm going to be I'm going to be mad. I want to be mad. I'm going to be mad. And can I can I see. further Ian help me out yes. on this? Let's further yes. illustrate the Ram Nation. Yeah. So Ian, <laughs> when they signed Carson Wentz, what you were excited, I was excited, Tom was, was. excited, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mark was excited. Tell me why you were excited. Was it about his arm strength? Tell me why you were excited. Well, long story short, he was an, a former MVP candidate that we've seen play good football many seasons in a row. Was it perfect all the time? No, but we've seen high-level football in a consistent basis for more than one season with Carson Wentz. Right. And it was time with the Colts wasn't bad. He got blamed for a lot of their nonsense. His time with Washington wasn't bad. Bad, excuse me. He got blamed for a lot of their nonsense. Clearly. And obviously Philly was dysfunctional at the time, and he got blamed for a lot of that nonsense going on behind the scenes. But how, so all how together? Much, how much like, of the cool. did you were you excited about that Carson Wentz was coming on the team? Like his character, his personality, did that factor in? Well, look, and I didn't buy into that he was some terrible teammate because a lot of, a lot of players go. did a lot of players backed him up. A lot of yeah. the media was like, he's a this, this, that, that, that. And Garoppolo, is, is, from all accounts, is not a bad teammate or any of those things either. But just from a pure football standpoint, Wentz is a good, was a good <laughs> quarterback at one point. You can't even argue that. Yeah. Has Garoppolo ever been a really, like, actually, like, man, he's pretty good. Has that ever really been a topic of conversation objectively, like, just without Shanahan scheming things up, without, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. And this isn't some 49er hate here. I'm just trying to be objective as possible. So I was excited about Wentz because we've seen him play good football. And he is a starting level quarterback in this league. And he was going to be our backup. Is Garoppolo a starting level? Mm. Okay. There's five guys that are available right now that are. Oh, God. Uh, let's hear it. Okay. There's five guys. I mean, <laughs> we're not going to get into the Brian Hoyer. Nate, Nate Sudfels of the world. Okay. Yeah, there's of course. Five, there's five guys that, you know, a lot of people that have had some success as quarterbacks that are considered backup quarterbacks. And I'm going to give them to your, give you the five names. One of them is 
Carson Wentz, and I'm assuming you guys are going to rate him first. But I want you to rate these guys one through five, okay? Okay. I want you know, just I want you to think about it. You're you're you know write it down or make a mental note. Yeah. And give give me your uh, give me your opinion. So I'll let Paul go first. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you these guys. Okay, ready? Cart. The, the, these are the only five guys that have had any success as, as quarterbacks that are on the market and available as, as backups. Um, I'm going to, I'm sorry. Uh, Jimmy G I'm going to have to add. So there's six. Okay. There's five plus Jimmy G. So the other five are Carson Wentz, Ryan Tannehill, Mm -hmm. Josh Dobbs, Josh Dobbs, Tyler Huntley. Okay. PJ Walker. Those are the other five. Where, who, where would you rate? Who would you rate number one? Wentz. Wentz. Okay. Agreed. Okay. Yeah, you guys can do. We can do it. We can do it simultaneously. Number number two. Uh, number two is Huntley. Number three is Tannehill. Number four is Josh Dobbs. And who was the last one? Walker. PJ, PJ Walker. Uh, that's he's. You know, I'll take him over Garoppolo. Okay, so you rate Garoppolo <laughs> last. Okay. Yep. So what what's your rankings, uh, Ian Carson? Yeah, real quick. I mean, Wentz. I'll take Ryan Tannehill second for sure. I would take, oh gosh, Dobbs, Huntley, Walker. I would take Dobbs probably third. I would take Huntley fourth, and then PJ Walker. I would I would take Garoppolo over PJ Walker. I would. Okay, so you guys got you guys got Huntley. Yeah. Of the guys that are remaining, I'm assuming yeah. you're not taking. Brian Hoyer or Nate Sudfeld over Jimmy Garoppolo. But <laughs> anyway, um, so, so, uh, so you guys, okay. So not, not too, not too happy about that. You know, maybe some of these other guys, Tannehill, maybe he's trying to, you know, stick it out. He, maybe he's, he's going to go the, the, uh, uh, Oh God, what's his name? Uh, came back to the, uh, Browns last year. Who am I thinking? Mind, mind. Uh, who Deshaun Watson? No, no, no. Who who came back to and for the Browns last year from the uh, rather out of retirement? Um, come on. Uh, for the come Browns, back player, come back player of the year. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about Flacco? Flacco, yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe yeah, yeah. Tannehill goes the Flacco route, right? He's kind of an older guy who waits for a. Uh, I still think some, I still think Tannehill's going. Have a problem. He's going to Pittsburgh. I called that. I still I still believe it happened. Now that Kenny Pickett's got shipped away, him and Arthur Smith link up again like their Tennessee Titan days. Interesting. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Obviously they have uh, they have Wilson, but yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, my point is there's these retread guys. I mean Dobbs, Huntley, Walker, and Wentz is still probably thinks he's a starting quarterback. But um, anyway, interesting. Okay, well, good, good thoughts. You guys are not high on the. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo signing. I think he's a almost an ideal backup guy. You know, been a very effective starter, winning starter in this scheme, and can do it now. As a long term guy, you know, to take you, bring something new to the table to take you, get you over the hump or something like. That. If you're, if you know, let's face it, if Stafford goes down, it doesn't matter who the fuck's back there. You know, this team is going nowhere, right? I mean, you know, right? I mean, let's just face it, right? And so, True. you know, and so with the guys, the, you know, backup quarterback's role is to play a couple of games when Stafford gets, you know, banged up. And hopefully he doesn't get banged up. But, you know, with his offensive line, he, he shouldn't. But if he does get hurt, you know, and he's older, and, and that's been his history for a couple of games, a guy can go in and execute. So, anyway, that's – uh. Uh, I guess I'm taking the the uh, positive view on that. I usually, I the, I'm usually the naysayer in this. In this yeah, group, gentlemen, but... gentlemen, it all counts how I'm going to finally feel about this. My my the finality of how I'm going to feel about it is how much we are paying them for this one. What's season. the over under on your on your number? It better be under three mil. It better three million. It better. What's your over under, Paul? Better free. I mean, Paul's, I mean... Paul's over under is free. I'm like, listen, it better be like a very, very minimal number because, you know, in my mind is like if you're start, you start talking about those numbers that you were throwing around before, you know, that that's a, another position player that we can't sign. 
And I don't think he's worth. So the way I look at it is like when you when you start talking about like five million stuff, you're talking about a two for one deal. You're saying he's as good as having another player on the roster. That's what you're saying. Like another like another five million dollar safety. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that I'm like in, right, immediately to me, that's like no brainer. No, absolutely yeah. not. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Also okay. the, I, to me, also like the, you know, you know. I'm big on like the psyche of it and the intangibles aspect of it, the psyche of the team. Just, it's just, you know, gives me like a, just a bad vibe having him on the team. It's kind of creepy. Yeah. I, know. Yeah, I, know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, not a great I, team. I mean, the teammates loved him, but he's not a good communicator. Yeah. It's an interesting situation. The vibes are not great right now in Rams nation. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just it's bad, yeah, bad vibes great. today. It's just, damn it. Bad <laughs> vibes. Yeah. Bad vibes. Yeah. All right. Well, let's end it on that guys. Been going over an hour here on an emergency roundtable. That's that's quite a bit of time. Yeah. Uh, so get real stuff. quick, Tom, real quick, yeah, Tom. Go ahead. I just yeah, want go to ahead. share my favorite yeah. moment of Aaron Donald. Yeah, go Wallace ahead. is on the th- thought of my head. Hey, yeah, shout out number ninety nine. I'm wearing the Super Bowl jersey. Had to wear it for this pod. Ninety nine problems, baby. Modern throwback, like like they say in the Rams organization. My favorite moment in person. I'll keep it to that because there's obviously great moments we've all seen on the television set. Was the Monday night shootout on monday night football rams chiefs in 2018 oh, when he had that sack fumble where ibukam scooped it up and scored that was a oh, great nice. moment that's when he was you know on a tear almost gonna break the sack record and i knew we were legit and i knew aaron donald was that dude at that moment i was like he's a hall of famer in that game no doubt about it and that was my favorite moment the strip sack okay. fumble that Ibu Kam scoop and scored in the Monday Night Football Classic, Rams Chiefs. That was awesome. Shout out to 99. You're the best. Can I share my favorite moment? Yeah. All right. It's easy. When we were in the Super Bowl, when they when they uh started uh surrounding him on the sideline after that late hit, right? And the Rams looked flat, and in my head I said, Now it's over. Now it's done. <laughs> right? I yeah, think that, that was, was the biggest them. mistake they ever yeah. did. That moment, I remember turning to my son. I said, dude, now watch. It's done. Yeah, it was. <laughs> the, it, it's actually a tie because the other the other one would be when McVay, when he had his helmet on and McVay went over to him, it's your time. And he just shook his head. He was like, and when, you know, we all know the rest is history. Yeah. And yeah, and, yeah, and the, yeah I mean, that's my best memories is the that Super Bowl run with, the Garoppolo sack and, you know, forcing that interception at the end of the game to, moments, to yeah. seal it. And then, and then he, and then of course he seals the, uh, he seals the, the, I was watching that play and, and you could, you know, you, you knew that Burrow wanted to go to chase cause he was, he was going to chase. Oh, yeah. He even went to chase before that um, in that previous drive when he overthrew the guy, when he overthrew him and stuff. So he was, it was like, I got to go to my best guy right now, you know? And, and, uh, Boyd's dropped a ball over the middle. I'm not going to Boyd. He's already, you know, and so, you know, he's going to chase. And then Jalen Ramsey, God bless him, falls down, literally slips. Chase is wide open. Byron, God. Byron, I mean, I mean, uh, Nick Young, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Nick Scott is back there. One, you know, single safe, single high safety. And no shot at getting over to Chase. And um, Aaron Donald saved the day. And, yeah. and you know, there's, there's an alternate the universe where they make that play and we lost. Good thing yeah. we live in this timeline, right, yeah. gentlemen? And, yeah, exactly. So, anyway, <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah those, those are the plays where he, you know, he showed up and he beat, you know, essentially double teams. And so, anyway, it's all yeah. good. But, um, right, just you know, greatness. Was, but my right. biggest, my biggest, you know, long term memory of Aaron Donald will be the legacy that he leaves, not just to the Rams, but to that position, right? Anybody who, anybody who is a true legacy player in any sport changes the position. And Aaron Donald is, was an undersized guy that did yeah, not, know. was not a prototypical in, in interior defensive lineman at all at the time. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, he, he dropped, what was he 12, 13? What was he drafted at? And, yeah. um, and that was even a lot of people said that was high for a, a little, you know, tiny interior defensive lineman. So he changed and now look at it. Now everybody wants, 
wants, you know, leverage and, and, and quickness, agility and speed and on the interior defensive line. He changed the game. Yeah. That to me is his living legacy. And uh, of course, as Rams fans, we think of him in terms of, you know, winning a Super Bowl and other things, but he changed yeah. the NFL in, in a, in a key position that was just a bunch of brawl of 300 pound brawlers across the, the whole line. And that was, that was what, that's what they were. And this, things are different now. And he, uh, uh, he, he did that. And, and in doing so, he ended up enabling those guys to be pass rushers and run defenders simultaneously. And yeah. that entire position group has started to get paid, whereas they weren't before. So, um, Cool. Anyway, shout out thank to you, Les Snead. Thank you, Les Snead, for choosing Aaron because the Greg Robinson pick in uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, second overall, what a disaster that would have been if now looking, you know, Aaron's retiring today for a different team and just how, how our, how there would be no good times, most likely, more than not, possibly, right? The trajectory of this yeah. team with so everything funny, would be different. And you know, man, I mean, that's just how it goes sometimes, baby. Sometimes you get lucky and you make good decisions when you don't know if they're going to be good. And to your point, Tom, all those metrics, nobody knew, but the Rams did know. And here we are today celebrating. Here we are good. today. So good for them. So anyway, yeah. we'll end on that note. And uh, thanks, guys. Great stuff. And as always, and uh, yeah, see what else, uh, see what other curveballs the Rams throw at us over the next several days. And yeah. hopefully be back on Tuesday and uh, with another round table and uh, yeah. chop it up again. So keep, keep, keep it rolling. So, um, until then, thanks everybody, and uh, uh, exciting, uh, exciting times ahead for the Rams. Keep our thought, positive thoughts up despite losing Aaron Donald, and we'll talk to you soon. AD all day, baby. Ninety nine problems, but the Hall of Fame isn't going to be one. We'll see you in Ken, Aaron Donald. Salute. Oh, throw on that jacket, baby. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there.